Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the November 2021 edition of the Microsoft Teams New Feature Roundup. In this video series, I'm gonna be walking you through some recently announced and some recently implemented Microsoft Teams features. Now, before we get started, if you find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams content that I publish. Lastly, head over to luigiacobalis.com and be sure to join the mailing list so that you don't miss out on any of my video or written content. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now the first new feature that we'll be talking about are cart captions in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, if you have never heard of cart captions, cart is an acronym that stands for communication access real time translations. Now, essentially what this is, is this actually allows you to hook into an external party who provides translation services to actually translate the dialogue that is taking place during a Microsoft Teams meeting. Now, if you weren't aware in Microsoft Teams meetings, you can actually enable live captions. Now, the captions that are available in Teams meetings out of the box, that is facilitated by artificial intelligence and sometimes you know, it may not actually be 100% accurate. Now, those captions actually support 28 languages. Um, and again, sometimes you might actually have a requirement to have somebody transcribe a meeting as it's occurring to ensure 100% accuracy. And again, that's where cart captions come into play. Now to actually enable cart captions, what you want to do is when you actually go ahead and schedule your meeting, you want to click into the meeting options menu and you're going to now see this option here that says provide cart captions. You wanna go ahead and toggle this on and then you wanna go ahead and click save. What that's actually going to do is that's actually going to generate a URL or a link that you wanna go ahead and share with that external third party who's going to be providing you with captions during that specific meeting. All right, now once you've actually shared that link with your cart caption provider, the next step is to actually enable cart captions in your Microsoft Teams meeting. So when you've actually joined your meeting, what you want to do is you want to scroll up to the top of the meeting window and you want to click on the more actions button. Then you want to click on turn on live captions. Once live captions has been enabled, what you're going to see at the very bottom in the right hand corner of the Teams meeting interface is a button that reads caption settings. So you can see I'm hovering over three dots. When you actually click into this, if your cart captions provider has gone and done the setup using the link you provided on their end, you're actually going to see a menu option here that says enable cart captions. And that's all you need to do to actually start the cart captions in your specific Microsoft Teams meeting. So that's it. That wraps up the overview of cart captions. Let's go ahead and let's check out the next new Microsoft Teams feature. Now the next feature that I'll talk about is the content from camera feature in a Microsoft Teams meeting. Now essentially what this feature does is it enables intelligent capture and it allows you to use your computer camera or a USB camera or document camera to make a physical object the focal point of a Microsoft Teams meeting. So imagine that you're facilitating a Microsoft Teams meeting, you're actually in a boardroom with other participants and you have some participants joining from the Teams meeting, perhaps you're going to be whiteboarding something. Using this feature, you could actually take your camera and point it to the whiteboard and have the whiteboard uh, be the focal point of a shared screen so that those participating remotely can actually see it clearly. Now this feature actually has three different share options. So it has a specific option that allows you to capture or project a whiteboard. So it's sort of optimized to capture content on a physical whiteboard. You can also focus in on a physical document. So there's a specific setting for that as well. And it also has an option to capture an actual live video that might be playing on another computer, on a mobile device or a monitor. Now this is a really handy feature as more organizations sort of transition into hybrid work environments where you might have participants joining meetings 
uh, virtually and you might have actual participants you know, in the same physical space participating. Now let's go ahead and let's look at how to quickly enable this in a Microsoft Teams meeting. All right, now to actually use the share content from camera function in a Microsoft Teams meeting, when you're in your meeting, you want to scroll up to the top of the meeting window and click on the share content button. This is going to bring up the share content tray. And if you scroll to the bottom here, you're going to see this new option that reads content from camera. You wanna go ahead and click on this. And what you can see here again is that the content from camera feature has sort of three default sharing options, uh, whiteboard, document, and video. And again, each of these is sort of optimized for trying to share that specific physical object, be it a whiteboard, uh, a document, or a video. So again, you wanna go ahead and select the one that is appropriate for what you're trying to share. I'll go ahead and click on whiteboard. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to bring up this content from camera menu. So here you would have the opportunity to select which camera you're using. Now, I don't have my video feed enabled, so you can see that I don't have the ability to click in and actually toggle my specific camera. And again, if you wanted to change the type of content that you're trying to share, again, in terms of a physical object, you could do that easily by just selecting it in the dropdown. Now, if you had your camera enabled here, what you would actually need to do is go ahead and try to point your camera to that physical object. Uh, and then Teams is actually going to try and optimize its view. So if you're trying to focus in on a physical document, it's going to use its image capturing to find the boundaries of that document and essentially make it the focal point in a clean way uh, in your Microsoft Teams meeting. Now, as I was testing this, I did notice a few instances where Teams was struggling to actually catch the boundaries of a physical document that I was pointing my camera to. So if you are experiencing that type of issue, that's where the scan again button comes in. You just wanna go ahead and click that button and then try to adjust your camera and it's going to try to focus in on that physical object. Once you've done this and you're satisfied with sort of the setup and how it looks, then you can go ahead and click the share button and that's going to display that physical object to your meeting participants and it's going to again make your video feed uh, a bit transparent so as to not obstruct the view of that physical object. So that's all for the content from camera new feature that was added to Microsoft Teams. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the next new feature. All right, now the next new feature that I'll be talking about is the ability to create polls in Microsoft Teams meetings that are open-ended questions. Prior to this feature being released, you were only able to create a poll that was multiple choice. Now you can actually go ahead and create a poll in a meeting that's open-ended, so you can actually have your participants provide their own custom responses. And what's really cool is that Microsoft Teams will actually visualize the responses in the form of a word cloud. Now, if you've never heard of a word cloud before, essentially what it is, is it's a visualization or a clustering of responses to an open-ended question where the more frequent that a particular word is mentioned, the bigger and bolder it appears in the word cloud. Now, this is something that other um, meeting platforms, digital collaboration tools had supported in the context of meetings, but this was actually lacking in Microsoft Teams and Microsoft has listened to its users and has now made it available. Let's go ahead and let's look at how to create an open-ended poll in a meeting and how to actually look at those word clouds that are created as a result. All right, now to create an open-ended poll in a Microsoft Teams meeting, the first thing that you'll need to do is schedule your meeting and then add Microsoft Forms to the actual meeting invite. Once you do that, you're going to see this polls option at the top of the meeting invitation. You wanna go ahead and click on that. Then you want to come down and click on create new poll. And what you're going to see here is this new option that says Word Cloud Poll. So you wanna go ahead and click on this. And here you can see that you can actually add in a custom question. So I'll just type, how are you feeling today? And you can see here that by default, participants when this poll launches will actually be able to type in their own open-ended response. Now, if you wanna actually share the word cloud with respondents in real time, you wanna make sure this first option is checked. 
and you'll notice here that it is by default. And again, if you wanna keep the responses anonymous, then you wanna go ahead and check this box as well. Once you've completed creating your open-ended poll, you wanna go ahead and click save. And so you can see here now that the poll has been created and you could actually launch it from here while your meeting is taking place or in the actual meeting window, you can click on the Microsoft Forms icon and launch the poll from there. So that is the new feature that is the ability to create open-ended polls in Microsoft Teams meetings and have the responses visualized as a word cloud. Let's go ahead and let's check out the next new feature that has been implemented in Microsoft Teams. All right, now the last two features that we'll be looking at in this video pertain to search capabilities in Microsoft Teams. Now the first one is called Top Hits and essentially what that does is it will actually auto-suggest relevant search results when you type any type of value into the global search bar. So it's actually going to go ahead and it's going to search across all of the different domains in Microsoft Teams, specifically Teams, Files, Chats, channels, etc., And it's just going to quickly show you a small list of the top hits that actually match the parameter that you put into the search bar. And this is really just trying to help you find information in a much more easier fashion than in the past. And last but not least, Microsoft has recently implemented a revised search menu in Microsoft Teams. Now you'll notice I use the word revised and not enhanced. That's because Microsoft didn't actually update the search capabilities with respect to finding specific messages or files. Uh, my opinion is that the search capabilities in Microsoft Teams definitely have room for further improvement. Essentially what this change did is it took the search menu that used to appear in the left-hand side of the Microsoft Teams user interface, and they've now made it its own full pane menu where you can actually view search results and you can actually drill down into the specific domains, again, messages, uh, people or files, and you can apply different kinds of filters to help you find your content much faster. Now, again, uh, there's definitely some room for improvement with respect to searching for messages. If you've ever tested it out, when you actually find a result and click on a message, it doesn't actually bring you back to that point in the conversation, but rather it just displays it and it can be a bit frustrating at times. So that's it. In this video, I walked you through some recently implemented features in Microsoft Teams. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Yacobalos. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.